Well, welcome to another Hog Out, and we're going live today. We've got plenty to talk about. We're going to have a quick preview of SRH taking on RCB at Bangalore tonight, and then we'll quickly just touch on Lucknow Super Giants getting absolutely smashed by my mob, Kolkata Knight Riders, and then the Mumbai Indians. They're falling down. And uh, they got toppled by a CSK, and we've got plenty to talk about there as well. And we've got a CSK uh, fan on, Diraj, and he's got a few questions for me about last night's game and what's going to happen in the future of IPL this year. So let's get on with the show with the bumper. Right, I'm going to be quick with a preview tonight. RCB taking on SRH. I think SRH are going to be too good for RCB. RCB don't have the bowling depth, as their captain Faf de Plessis said last time. They don't have too many weapons in there, and they don't know whether to play Green, Jakes, or uh, Maxwell. Maxwell's not firing. I think Maxwell's got to come out of the lineup. And uh, they have Green instead of Jakes. And the players that I'm really looking forward to tonight are Reddy, young Reddy. I think he's going to really take the game away from RCB. And also Abhishek Sharma. I'm really looking forward to him. And where uh, the other other. Where it's going to be won and lost is probably at the back end as well between Klasan and Kartik. But I think the SRH bowlers in the death overs have too many options to counteract Dennis Kartik tonight, and I don't think they're going to have that power game uh, finishing off. Watch out for Klasan. He's going to absolutely annihilate them tonight with Young ready alongside him. Vera Coley, uh, obviously, will make some runs tonight. Hopefully, he makes them a little bit quicker so he doesn't put pressure on the middle order this um, yeah, this particular game because the powerhouse of Sunrise's Hyderabad, they've got high strike rates. He really needs to um, expand his game a little bit tonight and take the pressure off the other batsmen. And Faf de Plessy out the top, uh, awesome. But there we go. We've got little Abhishek Sharma there too. Watch out for him tonight. Oh, I think he's going to love the place of uh, of Siraj and also the swing from Topley where he just takes it through that backward point region. Watch out for that. Also, RCB have got to play Dale. But enough of that game tonight because we had two big games last night and I want to get on with them. Lucknow Super Giants uh, took on uh, Kolkata Knight Riders. Now, I want to talk about Lucknow first. Uh, Shamar Joseph. Got a little bit of a pounding last night. Not the best figures. None for 47. 22 off the first over. There's a few wides there. And what about that ball where he had salt, just a leg glancing it, could have been caught by young Tucker out short, third, or fine leg. All of a sudden, he's got a wicket. The energy's up. He was bowling 150 plus, swinging the ball away, and it was caught a no ball. And then all of a sudden, a couple of wides after that, one wide going for the boundary, and he fell apart. Well captained by Rahul Dravid, but not making him bowl the next over from that end, but waiting for a, a, a couple of overs down the track. But this kid has got it. They've got to give him another opportunity next game because he really ruffled a few feathers from the Kolkata Knight Riders uh, batting lineup. So if he can get that first over next game right, then all of a, all of a sudden follow up with the next over. Mohsen Khan at the other end, who had a lively spell as well, becomes more of a weapon. And then you've got two bowlers bowling 140 plus. And then if you get Mayank Yardov to come in with his extra pace and accuracy as well, or like now Super Giants, their defensive game improves massively. But last night, they didn't have enough runs on the board. Um, well, they had enough runs on the board, but that first over from uh, Joseph just uh, just wasn't what they wanted first up. And I was listening to Justin Langer talk about Joseph after the game, uh, and Joseph was nervous. Before the game, uh, a couple of 
uh, over the last couple of weeks, he's been very relaxed around the group, but all of a sudden he's got this opportunity to play IPL cricket. He's play, hardly played any white ball cricket in his life, and now he's on centre stage. And I thought the first couple of balls were sensational. Drop catch, no ball, wides, put him off his game. But I think that is perfect for this young man because he's come off a test series over in Australia with a high where he won the game for the West Indies out Brisbane. And uh, all of a sudden, he's been put on the back foot. He's had a poor, a bad game, not a game that he's expected. Now he'll come back down, settle and readjust himself. And the next game he plays, watch out. I reckon he'll get a bag for three for. And uh, on the counteractive uh, with Mitchell Stark bowling for KK, uh, KKR, he hasn't been getting any wickets, but he's been getting a lot of edges with the new ball. And people are saying, well, he hasn't been bowling that well. Well, he has. He's been creating those outside edges. He's been very unlucky. Last night, there was a great catch out point. I uh, can't quite remember who it was. Um, Ram Deep. Beautiful catch out there. All of a sudden, things have turned for Mitchell Stark. But the commentators, early on, he got the outside edge of um, of De Kock and they're saying that he's not bowling well. Well, he is bowling well. He's creating those edges. So Stark getting three far, that is a good thing for KKR moving forward. He's going to get his confidence back. He hasn't played too much T20 cricket over the last couple of years. And now just watch the pace rise as we get into the back end of the tournament and KKR move into the finals. And all of a sudden, bang, they've got their trump card, the opening bowling the bowler there who swings it both ways, a huge weapon to take bigger wickets early on in the power play. So KKR are in a very good position to power forward now with the tournament. They've, they've got a great foundation to finish hard in this particular tournament. But... With Mitchell Stark getting three wickets, what does it do? With him in form, it gives their spin options plenty uh, plenty to work with in the middle overs. They're not under as much pressure to pick up the wickets. And yesterday, if we look out the difference between the game, it was those middle overs. I think 48 balls from spin from KKR, that's Narayan and Chakravarti, went for 47 that's not good enough. You've got to put pressure on your spinners. And then the Lucknow spinners, they couldn't deliver. So uh, they got pounded. So the difference yesterday between KKR and Lucknow Super Giants was the spin. Right, let's move on to the next game, Mumbai Indians and Chennai Super Kings. Have we got the graphics there? Yes. And we're going to continue with a the theme of spin. Mumbai Indians don't have depth in their spin. They bowl one over from Gopal. They bowled a couple of overs from Nabby in the power play, trying to uh, just force some overs or some pressure overs up front so that they can use Boomer later on in the game. They can't use Boomer in those crucial moments where he can really uh, get inroads into the opposition team with the new ball and then out the power play. They don't have depth in their pace. They don't have depth in their spin. But if we look at Chennai Super Kings, they only used Jadeja yesterday. They summed up the conditions well. Tekshana, if he played, I would have thought that he would have dominated on that wicket yesterday with his mystery spin and extra bounce, but they went with the extra pace. So they've got depth in their spin department. Mumbai Indians haven't. Chowla, who they used last year, who did so well, hasn't fired this year. But there's one player, one player that the Mumbai Indians have to get. If we can move on to that next gra graphic, please, AK. It's Kartikeya. The left arm off spinner, Carter Kier last night would have been the perfect option against Chennai Super Kings because he can bowl that left arm off spin, turning it away from the right-hander. But when the left-hander is on, especially someone like Dubai, who they didn't bowl spin against, he could have bowled those leg-spinning Chinamans and taken the ball away from Dubai. And Dubai, very good with the reach, but if he was going to reach Carter Kier, the ball was moving away, so he wouldn't have had as much control. So Mumbai Indians, if you are going to get a spinner in your team, which you need, get Carter Kier on. Right, where are we going to next? Are we going? Uh, what's the next graphic that you got me for me there, uh, AK? I was, I was wanting to talk about Geica World. 
Now, last time I talked about Geik Award, uh, when he is um, chasing, he sums up the conditions very well. He's one of the best batsmen chasing in IPL history. But last night, the way that he set the tone, the way that he summed it up, his strike rate yesterday, uh, he was inventive in the power play overs. He was giving himself a little bit of room. He was trying to take the bowling on. He was trying to up the game. He realised that a score of around 192-100 was going to be par on that wicket, and he played a more aggressive game. I'm loving this kid. I'm loving his leadership, and I'm loving the way that he's summing up the games. Every now and then... Uh, with his development, I've just thought that he's been slow with a strike rate in the power play overs. But the more I watch him, the more I see him develop, the more I see him adjusting to the uh, to the conditions. And I want to quickly talk about Dubai as well. Dubai, Mumbai Indians, what were you thinking? You didn't want to go with spin after Gopal got, uh, got the breakthrough of Ravindra. Just by one over a spin against Dubai. Just one over a spin. But you went for pace. You tried to bowl, bowl the short stuff to him. He's worked on the pull shot. Bang. You try to bowl wide to him. He goes through point. You over pitch. He goes through covers with timing. He's not overhitting the ball. He is timing the ball. And he's got to be playing or at least in the squad of India going into this year's T20 World Cup. All right. We're going to go on to the bowlers here, the pace bowlers. Tekshana. Um, Desh Pandey and Tarkor. We're going to throw Jadeja in this. Overs 13, 14, 15 and 16. They went for less than a run a bore. These guys summed up the conditions well. They had great game plans against batsmen that were in. Rohit Sharma was batting. And he couldn't get these particular players away. Hardik Pandya was batting as well. Now, the thing with Rohit Sharma that he was bamboozled by these bowlers was they were going wide to him or uh, Tarkor was going wide to him. And instead of trying to go down the ground or hit over the cover region, he was trying to still tug it straight and over mid on. He didn't have the answers for it. He was giving himself a little bit of room rather than doing what Dubai does and get across and try and hit it over cover. So Rohit Sharma there struggled a little bit in those uh, that particular phase of the game, even though he made a wonderful 105. But I'm going to give credit to the bowlers of Tarkor, uh, Day, Paddy Rana, as well as Jadeja, able to control the powerhouse of Rohit Sharma and Hardik Pandya through those overs. It's not easy out one KD Stadium with short boundaries with the ball coming on. Chennai Super Kings, they are well planned and to slow someone down like Rohit Sharma, who's in fine form, in touch and was well into his innings in that game was the turning point. So well done to those guys. Okay, there's one guy that we've got to talk about just at the end. Oh, here we go, Paddy Rana. Sorry, four for 28. He was the difference in the game. And you can say there was a little bit of luck there, but the pressure that he applied and the other bowlers by just bowling good lines and lengths and making the Mumbai Indian batsmen have to take risks created those opportunities. And that first shot of Sky going down to deep point, it was there. He was just unlucky to get away with it, but it's the pressure that's created by the bowlers that created that, that that particular opportunity. So well done to Paddy Rana last night. I love that side on action. I love the way that he's able to utilize the slower balls, but he's very much like Boomer. Boomer is probably slightly better than him, but the way that he executes the Yorker and the skiddy bounces and the slower balls, he is a young man that is rising very quickly. And the depth in this Chennai Super, uh, Super Kings Bowling attack is enormous. They've got variety and they've got bowlers to suit different conditions. But there's one other guy that we've got to talk about. I don't know who he is. Okay, can you get that uh, little slide up? Who's that? I've got to get my eyes out. Ne never heard of him. MS Dhoni. Oh, MS Dhoni, 20 off four balls. What I loved about this, the crowd's chanting. He's walking out. Any other player would be nervous. 
He didn't have one bit of sweat on him. Not one bit of sweat on him. Arctic Pandia, the captain out the other end, he's on his home soil bowling to the legend out the other end and he's been getting a little bit of a, uh, not, well, hasn't been getting a following out Wayne Cody. They haven't been happy with him. They haven't got behind him. So the captain of Mumbai has got a bowl to the legend while the home crown is chanting, Doni, Doni, Doni. First ball, wide of off stump. It does what Robert Sharma wasn't doing, or should have been doing, and that's hit the ball over mid-off. Beautiful timing. Hardik Pandy straightens the next one up, over mid-on. Next one, whips it over square leg. And I've got to say, as we get the guest on now, Daraj is coming on, and I, uh, I'm going to say to Daraj, MS Stoney didn't finish the job. He only got two off the last ball, but 20 off four balls, it's only ever been done once before, and that was Cronel Pandia over in Sharjah, um, and he hit four off, uh, he hit 20 off the final four balls of that over, but Cronel Pandia only hit two sixes, not as good as MS Dhoni hitting three sixes. But anyway, there we go, MS Dhoni, what a fine innings there. As we get Daraj, uh, Daraj up as well, uh, our special guest, and if you want to talk to me, you can either get in the comments there or fill out a form and get in the chat box and come in live as a special guest as well because I really love, really love talking to the fans. But as Daraj is coming up on screen, what I loved about MS Dhoni's little knock yesterday was he was batting with Dubai, the third six, hit out of the ground, and they are in the middle of the pitch uh, punching punching gloves. And Dubay's just smiling out uh, MS Stoney as MS Stoney's talking to him. He had the best seat in the house. But he has set the world alight with his own batting, but it was overshadowed by those final four balls of MS Stoney. And I reckon uh, he would give up the big knock that he had just to spend those four balls out there with a special moment from, moment from MS Stoney there. It was unbelievable innings. Right. Um, uh, yes, Anna Palm, as, uh, as we're trying to get the uh, special guest up, I'll just go through a few questions here. Uh, Anna Palm's just said there, I said earlier, there are CSK fans in Mumbai also. There were. I thought there were more CSK fans over in Mumbai last night than the Mumbai Indian fans. I hardly saw a bit of blue out there last night. And I'm going to continue with Anna Palm because he just put another comment there. Do you think LSG are more dependent on their overseas batters? I do. I do. I think uh, Bandoni and uh, Huda last night were given different roles out the top of the order. And I just thought they chewed up too many balls. I just think if you're going to have uh, the two Indian youngsters going in, they didn't have Paddy Cole there as well. But if you're going to have those uh, two going in, they've got to be more aggressive than what, what they uh, were last night. Rahul, his job's to try and bat through the overs, and sometimes he's going to get caught up with his strike rate. But you can't afford to have two batsmen with low strike rate out the uh, out the crease. So you are right there, and a pump. But they've got to try and get Paddicle right so that they can um, they can utilise some overseas uh, or overseas pace. They don't want to have to put another overseas batsman in there. And as I said at the start, Jung Joseph, Shaman Joseph, you've got to give him another go because I think he's going to set the world alight in this IPL. And I'd love to see him bowling alongside Mayank Yadav. Uh, AK, I think we're uh, having a few problems with the special guest getting on, aren't we? Uh, if you can get him on, that would be great. Oh, here he comes, and as he goes, ah, Diraj, how are you going? I was just about to go get into Gushan's uh, Gushan's question, but how are you going, mate? I am awesome uh, with the win yesterday against our arch rivals, and uh, with Donny finishing off in style in one game, just like what he did 13 years before. So I'm ecstatic at the moment. Uh, Saturday night I couldn't sleep. I was very happy with the CSK win because. This is the match we wanted to win. Okay. CSK against MI, it is always an, like, an epic battle, El classic of IPL. This is the match we wanted to win. We executed perfectly and we won it. And I am just top of the world, on top of the world. And excited to be in this show. Thank you, Hoggy, for having me in the show. 
That, oh, thanks very much, dear Arj. And we'll keep on with CSK. I love the balance of their team. Uh, um, you've got Raman last night and Paddy Rama, Paddy Rana, uh, Paddy Rana uh, <laughs> bowling as the overseas bowlers. But you've also got Tex Shana there with the spin department. I love yeah. the variety that they've got for the different conditions, yeah. and also in the batting lineup uh, as well. Uh, that they just seem to mix and match their lineup well, and I love the way that they adjusted their batting lineup last night and having a Jinka Rahane open the batting. This is probably one one area where they probably don't have the depth is in their batting. Yeah. A Jinka Rahane had a little injury last night. There was a two, and it was only one. But I love the way that they sent him in and said, just tee off with the new ball. If you don't get away with it, then Geico Ward will come in and do the job. Um, is that a bit of a worry for you as a CSK fan, the batting depth? No, not at all. Not at all. So Rahane <laughs> tonked last year against Mumbai. Like It was a shock. Berend off was torn into pots. It was torn into every part of the ground. Ashat Khan, now currently being in LSD, he was, like, he was playing so well. So yesterday, he did not click. But then we had uh, Rutura changing the first gear to fifth gear. He was play, playing an anchoring role last last time against um, KKR. And then no, he shifted completely. And then we have the sixer Dubey. So he's just, they thought, okay, we'll just bowl one ball against Sainz Gobal. He's just uh, not dead to the uh, deep mid wicket. And then they thought, oh, we, with bowlers, we can, with fast bowlers, they can contain. And there goes bang. He goes bang against Omar Shepard. He goes bang against Atik Pandya. When Bumbra bowls, he goes through extra covers. He's just an all-round player now. So you cannot contain him with the fast <laughs> bowlers also. So like, it's like a complete package. The only worry I would say is uh, playing Daryl Mitchell. So Daryl Mitchell, he's a like a number three batter. So if you are playing Rahane, uh, then I would rec recommend play Moin Ali. So he can swing to some two to three sixes. And also give you uh, edge against left-arm batters. So the only worry is if you are playing Rahane, uh, please uh, don't play Mitchell. Or if you are playing Mitchell, please don't play Rahane. Get in another uh, bowler for CSK. Rightio, good. And uh, Rizvi, uh, out the, the youngster out the end. The first game that he played, the first ball went for six, I think it was. Yeah. And um, yeah, he, he, just, he just looks like he's going to be a fine talent as well. And I'd like to see more of him. Absolutely. Yeah. So, like when Rutraj and Dubey is going at such pace, and you obviously expect Dhoni to come at the end. And this start was amazing, actually. Like, you you, you have a world class spinner, Rashid Khan, bowling to your pads and then stonking over him in the deep square leg. And the next ball, you take a double, and the next ball, you come straight up to him and then stonking over in the um, uh, like long on, long off fielder. Is just an absolute talent. The the way he has played in the UP uh, T20 league, it's like it's pure masterclass. He's like he's just like a guy who plays like a very free, uh, free flowing batsman, and he's devastating against spin. Imagine yep. Dubey and Rizvi playing against spinners. No one's mm -hmm. got a chance actually. <laughs> Actually, with 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 Dubai, as you as you're talking about uh, as you're talking there, I'm just thinking with Dubai, and I mentioned Carter Kia there. Yeah. Um, the the only the only way I as a as a spin bowler looking at him a leg spin bowler or would be to take the ball away if you're right armor uh, the wrongens with the odd leg spinner, but you've got to have a flipper in your armory. I reckon the Absolutely. only ball only ball there will be the flipper, and that comes out about twenty k quicker where you slightly get him on the back foot trying to pull through me wicket that's the only delivery that can, I can see being the biggest weapon against him from spin. And last night, I could not believe they bowled Hardik Pandya and Shepherd for too long against him. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you, can't have, you can't have your part-time all right rounders bowling against him. You've got to have more depth than that. Correct. So, I absolutely yeah. agree with you. Kumar Kartike was very good last time. They could have used him at least in this match. And uh, like uh, you have uh, Nabi bowling three overs, uh, none for 19. And then you don't believe him. Just because you had in this back of mind, he taunted Nabi for three success against Afghanistan when India came to uh, Afghanistan came to India on January. But you should you should try that, right? Like uh, you have Jade, you have CSK trying Jadeja against Ishan Kishan and Tilak Verma, who are very dangerous in one cutting. 
but you have to go with at least they are go by bowling those googlies and or at least try kumar kartikeya but there's no there's no uh, risk factor involved in mi hence they lost simple as that yep. now i i really i'm really loving dish pan day bowling <clears throat> Tarkor, I was very surprised that um, K, I mean CSK picked him up this year, but now you, just having that bowler with a bit of all-round ability, with the way that he bats, is perfect. I just think that uh, he struggled with his fitness uh, as such, and that's why he hasn't played as much for India. But he looks a little fitter at the moment. But that was one of the best overs I've seen him bowl last night. I think it was a uh, 15th over to Rohit Sharma when Rohit Sharma was uh, on song and Hardik Pandya was out there. He's a thinker. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just good to see him uh, putting – or those three bowlers, actually, putting pressure on the CSK um, think tank to bring Chaha back in because it's going to be yeah. very difficult uh, to figure out their pace attack next next game. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I say. If you're playing uh, Rahane, don't play Mitchell. Bring Chahar in, have Tusha Deshpande, have Takur. So, like, yeah, Tahur is, Takur is like a natural believer, as they say in the team. He just he just said, I'll go just pick the wicket and just, he just does it. So, he's, he's bowled excellently. Mm. Like, I, I could not even believe that he, he bowled a two run over against Rohit Sharma and the Infam Tilakwama, or even like, um, or be whatever. And, like, like it's like DJ Bravo's exact planning and it went as, as such is planned. So, Shah Deshpande going for 1 for 29. It's a like, shock to us, surprise to us, actually. Like, to Shah, we expect Tusha Deshpande to go for some runs, but get some wickets. And then going, Tusha Deshpande going for 1 for that 129. Takur going for none for 35. It's just an absolute dream for us. Be it in one kade. And them saying 230 is chaseable, 220 is chaseable. And then they succumb to 186. Well, chasing two not six. It's just a great victory. Can't say anything more than this. Oh, it is, and I, I'm just looking at it too. Um, you've got you've got Raman there that is awesome with his left arm uh, pace. But if you've got Paddy Rana in there, and you need Paddy Rana the bowl, and Ajinka Rahani is not fully fit for the next couple of games, I'd have Mitchell going up to number three, and then uh, keep Ravindra opening. And I'd have Ali playing a couple of games so that you keep Paddy Rana there, but that's only if Chaha is fit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because, uh, I, I, I yeah. completely agree with you. You either play Rahane or Daryl Mitchell. See, Mitchell yeah. completely relies on the straight boundaries. He just completely tries to play anything straight. So you give him some time and let, let, uh, let's give him a chance to prove. If he doesn't, he always have Moin Ali who can bowl two hours minimum and can talk the ball to heavy, like deep sixes. Any like he can uh, hit 80 meter sixes all the time, or at least he gets out rather than playing a 16 ball 19. That is not at all suitable for CSK. CSK has, has been the brand of uh, playing like hard hitting. Every every batsman who comes, they just hits and goes. So mm. just that uh, if Rahane is not fit, play Mitchell at three. And as you said, uh, bring Moin or if Tahar is fit, well and good. We have six bowling options. And uh, remember, they bowled on, They had only five proper bowlers yesterday. That was even that worked. So it's like yep. um, it's better to, better to have Deepak Chahar in the groove and then go with the further matches. Yeah, there's one thing that I'll do uh, with, if I was CSK. Just looking at it now, um, Rizvi. I would actually go, right, he showed a bit in that first first innings. Instead of bringing Mitchell in, bring him in and uh, around that number five spot just after Dubai, and then you break out the right-hand, left-hand combination there and just see what he's got to offer both against pace and spin. I think that's one thing with Daryl Mitchell. He's got to learn to be able to attack the spin. He's got height. He's got to work on his sweep shot, and that's having a, yeah. a conventional sweep and reverse sweep. If he can do that, then all of a sudden the spin bowlers are going to be bowling a little shorter and he can really play that power game. So um, someone like a Daryl Mitchell, he's got to be working on his game while over there. I, I mentioned Chris Lynn. Uh, remember Chris Lynn, the big hitter from Australia? Play for Cog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played, yeah, for, yeah. Yeah, yeah. played for Kolkata Knight Riders, but his weakness was against spin. Yeah. And he had 
he had hours of training there where he could have just faced spin in the nets to practice the sweep shots and uh, the power hitting, but he never did that. He was always in the pace nets, wasn't working on his game. So someone like a Daryl Mitchell, uh, he's got an opportunity over there uh, for CSK to really work on his game there. Um, now, have you got any questions for me? Yeah, 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 yeah obviously. So I have some five questions to you. So yep. my first question would be, which among these spinners should India take to World Cup? Sahal, Kuldeep, Bishnoi or Ashwin? Um, Bishnoi, uh, I probably wouldn't take. I just think um, he's too quick. If he wants to try and bowl slow, um, I, I think he, he, he doesn't turn the ball as much and he can't really change the pace and, and get that big turn uh, as much as the other ones. So... Bishnoi, uh, very good at IPL cricket, and I think he's in between uh, first class and international level, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think the other, th I think the other three bowlers there that you've got are well ahead of him, and you've got Jadeja in there as well with his left arm off spin, fielding, yeah. and and bat batting capability. So, is it just one player to play with Jadeja, or are we thinking about playing three spinners? So in like your team? it's like the they say the West Indies wickets will slow down and it is not yep. that it does not come as good as that. So if you want to take one more or two more, maybe with a gamble, like, uh, okay, uh, go with uh, uh, Chahal or Kuldeep or even Ashwin. So who will you pick? Well, you're Chennai uh, and Ashwin comes from Chennai. <laughs> and I absolutely <laughs> love Ashwin. I, I really uh, I, I really admire his work and his, his work ethic. But I, I think if you've got Jadeja in your team, I think you need a wicket-taking option. And I, I think Kuldeep Yadav is the man at the moment. Um, yeah. And I think Chahal um, will be a good option over there as well because he gets those big leg break um, turning deliveries. And there's probably a few more uh, right-handed batsmen than left-handed batsmen in the World Cup as well. So the ball turning away. So... I'll take those two in the squad, play cool deep first uh, in front of Ashwin. Um, sure. So that that that's how I'd go about it. Um, I'd love to take Ashwin, but I just think those uh, other two offer wicket-taking options, whereas Jadeja, uh, he's more of a bowler that's just going to try and bowl tight from one end um, with his all-round ability. And then you've got the quick bowlers around there. And I think with with the pace that you've got, the likes of Boomer and Shammy, if he's fully fit, um, I think as a left arm leg spinner, cool deep, uh, and the way that he bowls, opposition teams will want to go after him uh, in those middle overs. And I think that's where he really comes into the fore. When bowlers have to be uh, batsmen have to be more aggressive against him, that's his wicket taking ability, uh, taking ability there. That's a great question there. That is a great question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, move on to next question. Since IPL is predominantly batsman's game, and now that fast bowlers have two bounces, uh, what advantage should the spinner get? Uh, look, at the end of the day, I, I, I think um, the spinners that are around have been bowling really well. Uh, I don't think the, the spinners need the advantage. I just think they need to work on their variations. Uh, and for me, the great thing about it is leg spin is very important in those middle overs. Off spin, it's, uh, if you're just a genuine off spinner like a Jadeja who we're talking about, you're in uh, Nabby who played last night where you don't have all those variations – your role is probably in those power play overs or the middle overs where you're just trying to bowl uh, economy and you're there as an all-rounder that you add you add more depth to the batting and more depth to the bowling so you're there to to uh, do a um, a run rate type of a role whereas someone like an Ashwin who's got variety can turn it both ways and leg spinners, um, they're there for wicket-taking ability in those middle overs. So for me, if you've got good variety as a spinner, it doesn't matter what the wicket's providing you, uh, you're still in the game. And, and with that, with spin, you're turning it both ways. It's not, just not what you're doing off the, uh, off the pitch. It's what you're doing in the air as well. Are you getting enough revolutions on the ball? 
Are you getting that drop and drift? And if, if you're doing that, you're always in the game. And that's why the likes of uh, Rashid um, are, are so good because he's able to be economical, but he's yeah. also uh, also got those variations to create those wicket-taking um, opportunities. But it's about consistency of your line and length as well. Rashid bowls on a line and length of around about five metres, I think it is, where it's very – and the line is straight. It's very hard to hit down the ground, but it's also very hard to – play cross-bat shots because he's still hitting the top of the bales. Whereas someone like a Carter Kia, uh, Mumbai were trying to get him to bowl that five-metre length last year. But he's more of a bowler that gets up and over and is a little bit slower than um, than uh, Rashid Khan. So he's got to be a little fuller. But if you've still got those revolutions on the ball and you still can read the batsman charging you, you can still bring the length back as he charges you. If he's not charging you, you bowl that, that fuller length and they're the skills that you've got to work on. And that's why I think Carter Keir should be playing out Mumbai because he gets that overspin. He can bowl a little fuller. The extra bounce there, it's very hard for batsmen to still hit him straight down the ground if he gets the right length. So I, I don't think I don't think we, uh, as a spinner, I don't think we need to get any more uh, advantages. The only advantage, if we go up for an LBW and... <laughs> The opposition of uh, going for the D DRS and it still says umpire's core. You don't give the benefit of the doubt to the batsman. You give it to the bowler. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but third question is a simple one. Which is your favourite IPL team? Uh, my favourite IPL team, I, th I think I have two. Um, Rajasthan Royals and the Kolkata Knight Riders. I, I played for them. Um, uh, I, I love the owners of both teams, but I, I love the environment that they created. Um, Rajasthan Royals is, a, is a different to KKR. Um, it's sort of uh, Rajasthan Royals goes under the radar. They don't have a bigger following as as other teams. They're up there in Rajasthan, Jaipur, where it's a lot quieter, not as many people. And I, I really love, and I love the fact that they took uh, take a risk on uh, players that aren't big names. So uh, I, I love what they try and do for for Indian cricket uh, in in that aspect. Uh, and I love how they try and do do it differently to the other teams. Uh, KKR, um, I kind of love the hype of it with Shah Rukh Khan being the owner. Yeah. Uh, and I, I have to say, and I'm not saying this because he's the owner of the team, but just just the way he was around the group when he came in the change rooms um, and when we met him out, it, he's just a wonderful, wonderful human being, uh, just a great human being, and the management at KKR was something special. Um, so both, both teams there, I, I really came away from that experience Feeling that uh, that it's given me something special in my life, where I, I've I've had an experience that I'm not I'm not going to uh, get uh, again, right. and I, I, I think that's the best thing. And the, the culture, um, the, the the slightly two different cultures there, but just being able to mingle with with the locals was a great experience because we didn't really get to do that with Australia. Uh, when, when we're touring with the, the Australian team. So I think that even makes it more special. And I, I, I would have had um, similar experiences with the other teams as well. Yeah, both are, both your favourites are sitting comfortably in the top. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. No, it's it, it's good as well. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's good to see that. CSK, I, I, I talk with Mike Hussey a lot and uh, he... Um, he says it's a great experience there. It's a it's a great team environment. I spent uh, I spent a little bit of time with Mumbai Indians last year, just before the tournament started, and they 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 had a great connection there as well. Um, but the one thing that CSK and we saw it last night uh, that has the advantage over many more, or all the other teams is their diligence, their preparation. Uh, the way you, because you mentioned Bravo there, but don't remember, don't forget about for the uh, other bowling coach there, because he was saying uh, he was saying that um, he talks to the bowlers, but it, yeah, yeah. Um, so he talks to the bowlers, not inwardly. He tries to get out of the bowler what they are thinking, 
what plans they want because as a as a player you've got to be thinking on your feet out in the middle and uh that's what chennai do they 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 give that preparation for the player where he's making the decision himself the coaches are j- they're just guiding but the other thing is too when chennai um do travel um they are prepared when they land they've got food they they've, they make sure it is as comfortable as possible for the players when they land out their hotel so that um, uh, they don't have to fight for their food or, you know, they'd land, they might be hungry, go down to the restaurant, they might have to wait after ordering a food. Chennai, when they land, they have food there ready when they, they're at the hotel. They don't have to wait. So just those little one percenters, Chennai are so far ahead of, of every other team from what I've experienced through the IPL, and that's why you guys have had more success than everyone else. When it comes to the trophy cabinet, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which we have yeah. Uh, six, we have yeah. this year. Yeah. Okay, yep. and uh, the fourth one, it's uh, always a debatable question. What's your opinion about batsmen getting run out at the non-striker end? Should ICC interfere and bring a new rule saying if a brat- batsman crosses the crease before the release, the but the ball should be considered a dot ball? Uh, hang on. Should I see cr- crossing the crease before the release? Oh, so this is a non-striker. Is this uh, something to do with the man cat? Yeah. 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 So last night, I who bowled a no ball? Someone bowled a no ball. Varora, I, I th- yeah, no, Varora bowled a no ball, and I think yeah, the right. cock, the cock was out the non-striker's end. And uh, before the ball was released, the Cox uh, bat, I think, was on the line. So as the ball was going to get released, he might have just been over by about that much. In that particular scenario, I was a- I was actually thinking about it and I was going, well, if the batsman's out of his crease and the bowler's just overstepped, let go of the no ball. Don't call the no yeah. ball. Um, okay. Yeah, because uh, I-, I think in T20 cricket, it's a huge advantage, even if you're that far outside of the crease before the bowler lets go of the ball because you've got to go for a quick single and that can be the difference of the game. So um, I I think the ICC should be keeping an eye on that and if a batsman's uh, out of his crease, instead of having the man cat penalise the the batsman with a dot ball, actually that's, that's good. I was thinking of a penalty of five runs or six runs, but a dot ball would be perfect, would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. And that, that, then it keeps keeps all that controversy out of man cutting and that because we don't want to see bowlers stopping and saying, batsmen, get back in your crease. We want the action to be happening, don't we? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's a that's a good point. Good point. I like that. I like that. That's one of that's one of the best ideas I've, I've actually heard where it, it betters the game um, more ways than one. So uh, what do we call it? Fair play. It benefits that, but it also benefits with the game continually uh, to flow. Good, good point there, Diraj. Good yeah, point. Un- Great point. Unnecessary, unnecessary, the forms keep crying, okay, this should not be out, this is not the spirit of the get, and then they nick a huge one to slip and they don't go out, get out. Actually. <laughs> so we don't want these cryings, actually. Yeah, Better yeah. ICC bring a rule, be it a dot baller, maybe some other... Uh, Act one, yeah. Yep, yep, perfect. And, uh, What's your next question? Yep. Uh, next question is like, what length or line will you or any spinner should prefer to bowl to Dubai at the moment? He's toying with the spinners currently. I, he's really toying with the spinners. Now, there, there's there's a couple of things that um, I would try with him. Uh, I'd try and bowl a little bit slower, but remember, I'm uh, I'm turning the ball away here. Uh, so I'd try and bowl a little bit slower and try and get him to swing. And with the ball turning away, hopefully it just uh, his, his swing pattern comes through a little bit too quick and you get the toe end of the bat rather than uh, the, the middle of the bat or just between the toe and the middle of the bat where you've still got that, that power. So I'd be trying to just go a little bit slower there. Um probably try and do it two balls in innings and then with other variances of pace. But I'd also be trying to set him up with the with the flipper as well. 
So if I've if I've attacked the stumps with the leg spinner and he's pulled me for four, uh, I'd be trying to use that particular ball for the weapon of the flip flipper. So that's how I would try and toy with Dubai uh, as a left arm leg spinner. If I was someone uh, like a Rashid, and that was a great sixty hit off Rashid the other week. Uh, if if I was someone like a Rashid. I don't think Rashid's really um, confident with a with, with a flipper type delivery, but I'd like to see Rashid try the flipper to um, to Dubai, but also bowl a few slower wrongs to him that are that are wider, because he bowls that he bowls that type line, but then just throw the uh, the slower leggy out there and uh, Chahal, I'd probably be trying to bowl top spinners on that wide line uh, if I'm going around the wicket or if I'm coming over the wicket, top spinners are, are, uh, away from him because then you get that extra bounce. Can I play them out, um, out Jay Paul, where there's a bit of extra bounce? That's where if he if he plays that cross bat um, shot to try and hit down the ground, you've got a, a ch- chance of a top edge. When it comes to off spin, um, this is where the defensive game, and one thing I got taught – from um, uh, one of the great leg spinners from Pakistan. Um, my, sorry about this. My, the name just to lose me. Um, uh, I don't, it's not Khan. I'm, th- I'm thinking of someone else. But he said Kadir, Abdul Kadir. Uh, yeah. So I had uh, he was over in India on my first trip, and uh, he was in a hotel. So I went in and had a chat to him about the hotel, and he said, "Don't." Neglect the Yorker as a spinner, and this is wow. um, this is in Test cricket and One Day cricket. The Yorker okay. is a is a so if I'm an off spinner, I'd be trying to bowl into Dubai's toes, uh, and then try and slow it up with the wider one turning away from him. If I if I'm an off spinner, if I'm a left arm leg spinner, I mean off spinner, I'd be again around the wicket on the toes, but then trying to bowl one wider where it doesn't spin as much, so the ball's going away from him. That's the only way you can toy with him. If you're spinning the ball back into him and it's finding the meat of the bat, uh, he's going to power away. He's going to power away. But you've got to back yourself too. It's more of a mental game as well. And I've said it a number of times on on my vlogs, bowling to Verinda Sawag every time he came to the crease, my mind's gone. My mind's gone. <laughs> The only time I ever really had success against him was when I sat there before the game and said, whatever happens, just go to your first thought. Whatever happens, just go to your first thought. Take the pressure off yourself. You can only react to um, what the batsman's actually doing. And I think that's the mindset you've got to have to do, Bay, when he's in fine form. That is a great question, that. That is a great question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, again. Thank you, Hoggy. Yeah. yeah, is that um, is that are the five questions you've got for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt Henry, this is Gushan Gushan Singh. Matt Henry should have been given a chance in yesterday's game. This uh, format requires experience. You have to become accurate in all twenty-four balls to win a game. Uh, Shamir lacks T Twenty experience. Gushan. I this is Gushan Sanga. What do you think about this, Duraj, before I answer that statement? No, no. See, Shamas Joseph's figures would have gone very good because he was 2.5 for none for 27. And uh, yep. he, he got dropped by Arshad Khan. The salt, it was a, it was a simple catch. To IPL standards, it's a simple catch. So think three overs, one for 27, that would have changed. Matt Henry, yeah, yes, he's a line and length bowler. I don't think he'll suit for uh, T20. I will prefer sheer pace, Shamar Joseph, and give him at fifth over and get him like Mayank Yadav. Bowl him in the seven to fifteen. He will be the he will be the man for you. I still feel Shamar Joseph with this uh, Gabba spell, he will just uh, be a, he'll just keep on improving actually. Yep, oh definitely. I I think uh, Joseph what he provided last night. Uh, and I know that with Justin Langer there as well, he'll he'll be uh, he'll be sitting there. And Rahul put his arm around him as well last night. I think there's good leadership there for Lucknow Super Giants. They are not the best. They're not. Uh, they are the best defenders for a reason of scores over the last couple of years. 
because they keep calm. And the way that Rahul was uh, with with him last night was sensational. Um, so for me, I think uh, I agree with you. Keep him going, and I'd, I'd I'd stick with him with that first over too. I, I really would. One fifty k an hour with a new ball swinging yeah. both ways. When you got Mayank Yardov as well, oh my god! And uh, Mosin Mosin Khan uh, as well. You've got you've got three genuine quick bowlers there, but then you've got your your spinners Bishnoi, uh, Kronal Pandya, Sadat as well. Yeah. So you've got options as, with, with that as well. If those three pace bowlers get it right, then all of a sudden those spinners come into play, and someone like Bishnoi becomes a bigger weapon because he's someone that opposition teams knows that doesn't spin it as much. You think you can go after him, but his pace, his length, uh, make it uh, a little difficult to get get at him. And all of a sudden, your spinners become weapons in the middle over. So uh, for me, I think Lucknow Super Giants, not the best batting lineup, but uh, they're the best defenders with the ball when they get that lineup right. And I, I still think they could be... Uh, trouble out the back end and, and still finish in the top four. I got. I think uh, we've got one more there from Gushan. Uh, um, and uh, should CSK take a replacement of Conway and bring in Josh Philippi, uh, Nasanka, kind of aggressive opening batter, considering Rashan's inconsistency? What do you think, mate? No, uh, Conway is coming on May. So from there, he'll take us to playoffs, eventually to the cup. So he'll replace uh, Rachin straight away. We back players as, as they are. So Conway is coming to us on May, and then Conway takes Rachin's place, and then we go to playoffs, we go to finals, and we lift the trophy in Chennai. Yep, perfect, perfect, and uh, exactly right. And you've you've got to back your uh, you've got to back your players. And this is what I this is what I love about CSK. You have a few injuries and and so forth, and you fix it up. Punjab Kings were playing um, Rajasthan Royals the other night. Rajasthan had three of their main eleven out with injuries, and they still beat the Kings. That was a, that was a crucial crucial team. It's about backing the players that you got there, and don't bring in uh, anyone new unless you have a major injury uh, where you need that replacement. So I I I agree with you. Don't bring anyone else in because it upsets the uh, it upsets the apple cart. And what, what, that's the other thing that I saw from uh, Ford, Ford, I think it was, in his uh, interview. Um, they make sure that they back their players. They give them every opportunity um, yeah. because they understand how difficult it is to actually go out there and perform day in, day out. So they make sure they, they believe in the player. Uh, when they haven't had a, a couple of good games, they still back them. And there's belief there, and there's trust there. All of a sudden, the players are sitting there going, "Right, well, they've got the confidence in me. I can go out and play with freedom." And that's Absolutely. why I says that's why I says K are, are, are so good. And if you look at the list, um, you know, especially in the batting lineup, uh, there, there's there's not too many players that can come in and take a spot there at the moment. They, they, they yeah. don't really have the depth in the in the batting. It's the depth in the bowling that you do want because when you're travelling from uh, venue to venue, it, especially fast bowlers, it's harder to recover, get on a plane and then play the next game. Uh, but also if you have an injury to a fast bowler, you've got to have a good replacement there. So Chennai Super Kings have really planned well with their bowling attack. They've selected well. And they made sure they've just concentrated on a core group of batsmen, and that's why they are successful. And that is the blueprint yeah. of a great squad. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Now, Diraj, we finished. Yep. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. We've gone for fifty-four minutes. It's been a great chat. Chennai Super Absolutely. Kings, uh, Chennai Super Kings, fair mate. Well done. Hopefully, they have a little bit more success this year. Um, but I'm hoping that Rajasthan and KKR uh, get over the line as well. So, but I, I just love I love close games, and uh, I want every team to do well. But at the end of the day, uh, we we want to make sure that we see exciting games day in day out. Now, Diraj, yeah. Any messages you want to uh, say before we go? Absolutely. For your uh, love talking to you, Hoggy. 
uh, you're just a legend of the game and uh, like you, you just uh, like talk to me like another man and uh, i loved absolutely every minute of uh, talking to you and um, what else would i say csk go for the six and uh, <laughs> let let csk give a fitting farewell to dhoni that's it yeah that's exactly right oh gaik award captain captaincy have you been enjoying yeah. that yeah like get what captain see like it's like guy, guy under the guidance of dhoni but what i have learned from gekward is like he doesn't uh, trust more on spinners he trust more on the paces actually he bowled 18 overs of uh, pace against uh, uh, gujarat titans uh, and uh, like his, his, his thinking is also different but uh, it's like i like his captaincy obviously we will have to uh, like uh, accept him and the uh, relishes captaincy i love his captaincy he's, he's calm as dhoni and uh, his thinking is slightly different but uh, anyway under the guidance of dhoni he'll flourish he'll blossom and hope he lifts the cup for us well if you lead the team you've got to have your own mind and uh, you've yeah. got to back the players that you've got so uh, good luck to the young man now dhiraj thanks so much for joining us thanks everyone for joining us on hog out hope you enjoyed the show today and don't forget uh oh gushan thank you very much for that if you want to join me live on uh hog out Well, fill in that Google form. And also, just want to ask a question there to people that might be listening right now at the back end. Would you rather me do the live now or a little bit later in the day? Maybe an hour just before the IPL game that's about to start that evening. If you can put your comments in, that would be absolutely fantastic on any of the social media that I've got. I love to have that little bit of feedback. Thanks guys. Have a good day and good luck to your IPL teams and I think SRH are going to beat RCB tonight because they got too much firepower and a better bowling attack. Hog out.